Good morning, folks. We've got seismicity, polar vortex dynamics, the lunar eclipse is in about one day. We'll go over cool science and big climate and catastrophism discoveries to close. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours with only minor motions on the sun. The southern coronal hole group is turning through as the next solar wind enhancement will be in about 36 hours, and those sunspots we've been eyeing, happy to lone wolf it across the earth-facing half for now. No flare risk at this time. Quick seismic note. No major ones yesterday, but every quake on the map here is a blot echo. The deep quakes that signal a bigger one might be coming. Learn about that, the atmospheric factors, and the solar factors at quakewatch.net. Now let's head to the polar vortices where the south is breaking down as we approach their summer, and the north has already built up strongly here. We'll be eyeing dips and weakness in the vortex this winter to see the worst of the cold outbreaks. Folks, just before we speak tomorrow, the lunar eclipse will occur. It begins at 7 a.m. UTC, which is 2 a.m. Eastern Time in the U.S., 11 p.m. Pacific Time tonight. The eclipse peaks at 9 a.m. UTC, 4 a.m. Eastern U.S., 1 a.m. Pacific, and that's the thing to see. Lasts for a couple hours more. Folks, this is what we only qualitatively described yesterday, a radio bridge. While visible in UV and infrared show the major objects, the plasma and dust like to show themselves only in radio waves when at the largest scales, connecting galaxies or galaxy clusters. Another one here from Hubble, you know, it glitched at the end of October, and I think their plan is to just put crazy images from their archive out every day until they manage to fix the thing. Either way, awesome cosmic paint job there, baby star. Not bad at all. Now, the top science. We've got a double punch with this new climate study, and first, it's once again the identification that super rapid shifts in climate can take place. That's both to hot and to cold. These are the ones so extreme they make the modern global warming look like peanuts. But also, look at the chart. Uh, where's the younger Dryas? The most studied and most recent cyclical disaster and known cold snap, as bad as the last glacial maximum, is missing. Folks, in this coring, the cold snap is actually identified at happening at the Gothenburg geomagnetic excursion. It's not how the isotopes usually like to show it, but the ones that do are actually more on point. In this coring, the last disaster appears a thousand years older than in many others, but that's the one that's probably closer to being right. And speaking of the last disaster and further past disasters, more strong evidence for volcanic contribution to extinction at the end Permian, 250 million years ago. This matters because there's also pretty unequivocal proof of impactors at that time, and also the Illawarra magnetic reversal. We don't discuss this one much, but the science world sure does. Hundreds of studies, including three of them from just this year, in major geology or geophysical journals. And folks, this is one of the key points we insist on making in the disaster series. So yeah, not all the evidential lines are seen 250 million years ago, but at least three of them are. And for the 12,000 year cycle events over the last 100,000 years, they hold completely. This platter, repeating on the cycle, is what tells us it's not just volcanoes or impactors or any one of these items, but every single one of them can be inflicted by the solar flash and geomagnetic excursion. Next one is underway and expected in the next 20 years. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn about the disaster cycle with our disaster cycle playlist, the 12,000 year cycle. Just look in the description box below the video. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.